Hello all, may you be having your best Brat Summer and working everything you need to out on the remix. Welcome to this special episode focusing on, I'm sure you've guessed it, Brat by Charlie XCX. So obviously Fran and I did an episode last season talking about Billie Eilish and Charlie XCX and I posited that Charlie XCX was underrated because even though she had amazing songs and some popularity, I felt that she didn't get the credit she deserved. Well, nine months is a long time in pop music and Brat has not only been dominating the musical conversation, but even more the cultural conversation. So I really wanted to talk with Fran about Brat. So we discuss what Brat is as a concept. We go through the songs track by track. Fran actually gives a rating out of 10 for each one of them. And hopefully if you're confused by everything that's going on or why Lime Green is everywhere, this episode should help decode it. Whether you're a 360 or 365 party girl, I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Over Underrated Podcast with Fran and Babs. Is it over or underrated? Greetings fellow Charlie's Angels or newcomers to the Brat Summer. This is Babs and I'm joined by my co-host Fran for a special bonus episode. Hello Fran. Hello of the internet and hello Charlie XX fans. Hopefully you're here to listen to this or it'll be a bit of a pointless podcast. But... <laughs> <laughs> well see I actually see this as a bit of an educational episode because for the first time in my life Fran I am getting asked questions about Charlie XCX. I have had two different friends be like, can you explain to me why Charlie XCX is so big? Can you explain what Brat is as a concept? So this is also this is for the fans, but this is also for the newcomers who want to understand what on earth is going on and why there's lime green everywhere. Yeah, I just um, read an article um, sent by my podcast uh, co-host regarding the, the colour green. And instantly I went on to uh, a comedy site and already two comedians uh, are showing uh, the Brat uh, graphic design already. And I was thinking, I wonder how many Edinburgh shows will be mentioning Brat or have at least some, some Brat happening. So, yeah, I, I've kind of like dipped out of uh, modern music for the past few months. So oh, really? I, 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 was, uh, I, I was a bit shocked by how big this album was. I guess that's As you why you, imagine. you wanted to take it to the podcast. Yeah, as you can imagine, like, I am vindicated, Fran, my God. So, you know, I listened back to uh, the Charlie XX episode that we did before, because that is perhaps where you should start before coming here. Oh, or not. You know what? Do what you like. Do what mm-hmm. you like. But yeah, my whole argument there was like, oh, you know, Charlie XCX, she makes such great music, but she's not as well known as she could be. Well, <laughs> the things that have happened, even in the last 48 hours relating to Brat uh with Kamala Harris and and all of that did you did you know about this yeah I've been seeing all of the uh camera this is what I've been doing a bit of research regarding politics and there's certain people who are saying that Charlie XCX is is going right wing is that because of the Mean Girl song right so there's some confusion in in the internet (laughs) so this has been quite funny because I like I follow some lefty people and I remember one of them seeing like Brat Green is now a neoliberal thing. And I was like, oh my God, okay. Like, I'm I'm not, I'm kind of on your side, but calm down. Um, yeah, so yeah, Fran sent me a very complex Reddit I, I, breakdown mm. like, analysis because Dasha from the Red Scare podcast, which I don't listen to, I don't know much about. She's one of the, um, she, she said, Charlie said that she inspired one of the songs on the album Mean Girls. But there's a lot of weird politics going on. And I think... Yeah, there was a lot of talk about the dirtbag left, but they're actually right wing. I I don't I think Charlie, I would say she's socially she seems socially very liberal. Like, you know, she even um when she did that song with Sam Smith and Sam Smith, unfortunately, because they're trans, gets a lot of abuse in the mm-hmm. UK. And she and she was like, It's disgusting, the abuse that they're getting, and you know, shout out to the trans community, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, on especially LGBT issues, she's really good. But I think on I don't know, social so non-social issues i don't know i know with so many kind of especially younger people wanting on pop stars to speak out about palestine i think she might have um linked to a fundraising but she hasn't publicly spoken about that so i think it's the fact that because kamala harris is not you know like um the most pro-palestine politician to put it mildly 
people are a bit annoyed that Charlie XCX. So to explain, Charlie XCX tweeted, Kamala is brat and it mm-hmm. sent the internet crazy. And there's now like a million and one memes about it. So I, I think that's why. I think people who are like properly left wing are annoyed because, yeah, especially with but with Kamala's stance on um, on Palestine. But is it more of that she wants a a strong woman to be going for president? Is it more of that than anything really? Isn't it? I th- I think so. I think yeah, Kamala. This is it. I never thought we'd be talking about politics this deeply, but this <laughs> this is the power that Charlie XCX does. Like that's this is the thing, really. Apart from, personally, apart from, absolutely, I, I don't agree at all with her stance on Israel-Palestine, but on on many, many other things, I agree with Kamala Harris. I think she's quite a charming uh, presence as well. You know, have you seen the memes going on around her with yeah. the coconut tree and laughing and, yeah. But wait, perhaps we should take a step back and explain <laughs> what this podcast is about, what Brat is. So, Charlie XCX last month released her sixth Sixth album, Brat? Yeah, six, yeah. Thank you. And it has been very, very well received. It has been much bigger, I think, than any of her previous albums. And what is also genius about it is the marketing campaign linked to the album. Mm -hmm. So we'll come back to Brat as a concept and colour. What I found really interesting was the way that Charlie released songs. So, you know, she'd release a song, then she'd release a remix with a famous person. So Von Dutch, Von Dutch, Addison, uh, Ray. She did 360, then 360 with Robin and Young Lean, the, uh, then the album, then the album with three more tracks, and then Girl So Confusing, the version with Lord, which was really, that was such a coup de grace, mm-hmm. like amazing, uh, yeah, amazing song. The internet did indeed go crazy. So yeah, as a Charlie XCX fan, I'm just so happy like it's so exciting when a, when an artist that you like so much is generating so much conversation. People who never even heard about her uh, want to talk about her, and it's backed up by a very very strong album musically. I feel as well, but yeah, it is it is very interesting how it's just become so popular. Yeah, I guess similar vibes to self esteem for me. Like I've been a fan of Rebecca for a long time, mm. and now you know her last album instantly became massive, and like she's on the West End, she's appearing everywhere. You know, it's just Taskmaster, so it is like it's nice. But also, a bit of you is like, oh, I've lost my, I've lost my my private artist. You know, my, my... you know, but, but the thing with Char- like actually Charlie is someone that I really want to talk about, and I feel like I don't know, really, very few of my friends are into her. Like even friends. Who, who are into music and so I almost want to have a sign being like please ask me about Charlie XCX and literally when I went for brunch with one of my friends and she was like can you explain to me why Charlie's latest album is getting so much hype I literally like cracked my fingers and I was like okay here we go <laughs> so yeah because a lot of people were saying that her last album was more cynical for pop yeah. stardom and also doing Barbie so people have been surprised mm-hmm. if this is hitting as it is and obviously like yeah, it's got 95 out of 100 on Metacritic, which is basically almost perfect. Yeah, um, I read it was like the 14th best rated in the 2000s or something something like that. Some very high, yeah, and high like praise. Got, yeah, it's got 79%. It's still very high, but to hit yeah. the mid-90s is insane. Do you follow uh, Anthony Fantano, The Needle Drop, his reviews? Uh, he's... Early on, <laughs> early on, I used to watch him, but I think I've moved away. Sometimes it's it's all it's all too much. Sometimes I'm like, I'm like, just give me a star rating. I haven't got time for it. Half yeah, yeah, an hour. for a, a fourteen <laughs> yeah, minute yeah, breakdown. Yeah. I don't watch him too much either, but I he is a big Charlie XCX fan. So um, I think he named Charlie his favorite album of 2019. But the the Brat one is quite good because he like he's made his t shirt lime green and and uh, stuff. Okay. Uh, and then because of all the subsequent, like, you know, he's made a separate video on Girls So Confusing with Lord and, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, so maybe we should discuss the music before maybe. we get, well, and get your viewpoint as well. Obviously. Can I ask you a question? Because Spotify maybe has let me down. It sounds like there's people, uh, there's other artists on this album, but I can't see them credited. Is, am I wrong? Is it just her? No, yeah. no, I think it is just her. I think. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, cause... yeah, yeah. Apart, so the, apart from the, you know, obviously the remix versions. And the remix versions you have, like I said, Addison Ray, Robin, Young Lean, Lord. Uh, okay. But they're not on either Brat or Brat, and it's the same, but there's three more songs on it. So, 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 when, not... so when, when did that come out, that second version? I, I would have guessed a week later, a week or two later. Mm-hmm. The reason I ask because a lot of time previously Charlie's worked with lots of different collaborators and looking at this, it seems more stripped back to maybe only two or three writers per song. So she, she's worked with a few new people for mm-hmm. this one. So she's worked with Easy Fun. There's also a few more songs with Gesa- G- well, I never know how to pronounce the name, Gesaffelstein. 
mm-hmm. as well, who I don't know if you know, I, I quite like, it's very kind of brutal electronica. I like some of his solo stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, she she's mentioned in social media posts that there are some new people, obviously still A.G. Cook as per, who's also released an album okay. this year as well, that she features on uh, on a couple of songs. But yeah, so when, before I asked you if we could record this bonus episode, what songs, if any, had you listened to? I, I think I knew Von Dutch from 316, that was it. Yeah. So I knew that like, I've got my like, albums I've like noticed have have been released. And I, and I think, yeah, I'll get around to those uh, at one yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this yeah, is my excuse. I think it's normal, right? Like you have moments where you dip in it. That's it. It's like, I honestly, I was just thinking today before coming, I was like, I have not felt this excited and engaged about a record coming out since I was a teenager, I think. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm not saying, I don't think the album is like, you know, one of the best of the all time ever. It's It's too early for that. But just because of the... Yeah, because of the discourse around it, it's it's a very enjoyable for me. If this was two thousand and four, would there be a, a poster behind you right now? Oh, one hundred percent. I would have gone to the Brat Wall. I would have gone to Brooklyn to go to the Brat Wall. We'll come back to that. We'll explain what the Brat okay, Wall. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so what did, what did you think of the album? So yeah, I mean, obviously, I stupidly read the reviews first, which is never good getting into into it. And it's yeah, it's quite different to um, what I imagined because yeah, I guess it's more of a, a dance album or maybe I was thinking it's not really an album to probably dance to but it's an album but it's a soundtrack of a nightclub does that make sense yeah oh yeah, yeah so yeah. it's got a nightclub yeah. vibe but it's not like a, a banging like prodigy dun, 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 sort of album it's got slow moments um so yeah it was different to what I expected but she and I don't remember her rapping as much does she rap often I, I no like tracks. uh and in fact people are like oh she's definitely channeling Affy vibes which you know I think is definitely because I thought influence. I thought it sounded a bit like little sim on that thing is romantic but really yeah oh that I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have gone there but yeah why not why not it's interesting that you say that because I think the way I, I conceive this up definitely like it's like the club and the aftermath for sure mm. especially thematically as well right because maybe it's, like... it's the, the VIP section of the nightclub maybe <laughs> yeah, the, but then also you know like I might say something stupid I I think about it all the time it's like those are those are not the the club songs at all like mm. they're the one oh, and so I as well even though it's celebrating someone who is obviously uh yeah a very influential producer it's it's so much more contemplative that's that's what I enjoy about the album because yeah I think you know I'm nowhere near as extroverted as Charlie XCX I wish I parted a bit more perhaps but I don't want to be bumping it all the time thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to those lyrics about you know like going to the, the bathroom and like snake I guess doing do we have a little key do you have like, a little line how old is she again 31 so I was like, okay, is she, like, I can, I'm trying to think, is she thinking of her youth or is that her now? I don't really know how she stands. Uh, I think it's both. Like, it really? she's always talked a lot about like loving a party, having a house party, and listening back to the episode that we um recorded. I think I mentioned, I can't remember on which song is. Oh yeah, on Gone. Mm. Um, I mentioned that I was surprised that kind of Charlie's a bit more vulnerable there. They're talking about like feeling in certain front of people. And I was like, oh, you know, that really surprises me because that's, that's not the vibe she gives off. I mean, this is definitely the vibe she gives off on this on this album. I love like how blunt the lyrics are. The lyrics mm. are so honest and kind of hit you. I mean, some are a bit more vague, like Apple, for example, about driving to the airport. I think that's about her family, but that's, when you think about it, okay, makes sense because it's like Apple falling far from the tree, family tree. Etc. Have you drawn the dots on all of the people she name checks? Uh, oh no, I'm too. I'm, like, I'm too old. I'm not <laughs> on TikTok. Like, uh, no, no. I rely on the internet sleuths to try. It's a bit oh, okay. like how I'm not on TikTok, but I'm glad that as a an elder millennial, uh, people put TikTok videos on Instagram for me. Thank you. Mm. She is six years younger than me. That's that's enough enough of a difference there. Yeah, that's just because like I I've, I've, I've seen her, her documentary, and I, I I've always wanted to know like. Um, she seems quite vulnerable when she connects to a lot of people who are introverts, I assume. That's why I was yeah. I was thought, is she a geek who's in this pop world, or is she like a party person who I think she's yeah, both. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think she's both because I mean, um I I listened to she was one of Times People of the Week. There's a podcast with the with her getting interviewed. Mm-hmm. Um and yeah, you know, she talks obviously in depth what she talked about, you know, she used to make music in her bedroom and go on MySpace. And it's like you know, you have to be quite online for that. And I, I was thinking that in a way, Charlie is the perfect pop star for this age because she's she's the terminally online music fans' favorite pop star, is what I would say. Because there's just so much 
there's so much to get into the fact that she engages on on mm. twitter the fact that she like literally <laughs> <laughs> I, I read articles where it's like, I'm not saying that Charlie XCX endorsing Kamala Harris might lead to her winning, but <laughs> like, <laughs> it's definitely. And it, I'm like, bloody hell! Is she, is she that big? Is this really become bigger than Merkel? So I don't, it's, I don't it's know become like so. Ka Kamala Harris's Twitter account. The backdrop is Kamala HQ in the brat lettering and black and and, and background. Like wow. it's it's really. I think like I'm glad that you sent me um, the Reddit thread because I don't go on Reddit that often, but I scroll through the Charlie XX Reddit and it's so funny because it's just full of people taking pictures of things that are bright green, and like taking a picture of a car being like bumping that, riding that, wh whatever. Um, <laughs> so they're gonna have like the uh, Republicans with their bandas on their ears and all the Democrats <laughs> from green t-shirts. That's gonna be the yeah. next three months. <laughs> I know which side I prefer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but so someone on Reddit posted like, are there any Charlie verses similar to there are decades where nothing happens and there are weeks where decades happen? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's been less than two months mm. and the cultural impact that it's having. Although I will say one thing that I feel is getting a bit left out of the conversation. Um, so for the album cover, if people don't know, it's yeah a lime green background with some blurry aerial text saying brats. And um, when you read articles about why they chose that particular color, they were like, oh, it's a particular kind of disgusting shade of lime green. It hasn't really been used in in similar kind of pop situations. But have they forgotten about Carrier, Fran? I feel like Carrier is getting very <laughs> like, you know, Charlie is the queen of lime green, but Carrier is the king. You know, we've, you've got to give respect to it. The true. only band I can think of that color is Secret Machine's second album was the same color. Mm, working as, working in the CD shop for a long time, I was trying to think of other album covers. That's the only time I can remember of that color ever being on an album. Track. Oh, Ten Silver Drops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. the closest I can think of. Yeah, it's got a bit like I've got a, it, it, but it's a little bit darker. It's mm. not as kind of yellowy and sickly. But you're right. I think that is. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything apart. From Doesn't Carrier. all of Charlie XCX albums just have one word and one color behind it? It's, it's always quite simple. Well, no, name. this is what's. I'm so glad you asked that, Fran, because. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but since Brat being released, Charlie has now changed all of her album ah, covers okay. to a that's colour. That's what I and noticed. A bit of text. Okay, that's what I noticed. Then. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, because the one before was it's the one that was like in a white bra or something lying on the bed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. no uh, uh, that was the one before that. Okay. Uh, the one before is she's in a crash, so yes, you know yes. that she's on the on the windscreen of a car. Uh, clever marketing. Um, but again, clever marketing. But what's interesting, it, like that is a little bit, a little a cheeky little bit of feminism. Because she she did it specifically because she said that there's this expectation of like female pop stars that they have to be on the cover, mm -hmm. and I mean you know she's a very glamorous person, and I guess to some point she she enjoys kind of getting dressed up and, and all of that. I would absolutely hate it. Um, but yeah, I found it really funny that that's it. Like not only for this album has she done that, but she's done that for all the previous albums. If you go on Spotify and stuff, mm. you see that, and I'm like, is that permanent? Like what's going to happen from now on? Over underrated. But yeah, but going back to the music, like as an album as a whole, I mean, you, you've only listened to it a few times, right? From I've, from I've given every single track a, a score out of 10, if that helps. Oh, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> shall we? Really? We're only 20 minutes in. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, but yeah, bear, bear in mind, I've only heard some of these songs three or four times. Yeah. And I mean, there are songs actually that didn't. So I, I will say from my side, there's only one song that I'm a bit like, uh, but I I generally like every song, but not every song hit me on mm -hmm. first listen either. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay, I mean, yeah, go. I, I mean, I've got brief. I've got brief. You, you obviously can dig deeper. So starting off with the opening three sixty, um, mm -hmm. I put. It, it, I probably never said this out loud. Hyper pop classic. <laughs> yeah, baby, <laughs> embrace it, embrace it. Uh, and I looked at I looked at what PC music was at first. I thought, is this one of those bullshit terms like EDM? No, and no, like, no, no. This is music made on the PC. Let's call it PC music. You know I mean? No, no, uh, no. But luckily, it's, it's a, a label, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. We we discussed it. <laughs> we discussed it briefly in the the Charlie XX episode when you talked about Vroom Vroom, because that was the beginning of the foray into that. Uh, no, no. I agree. Hyper pop classic. So yeah, so three sixty, great intro, gets you into the, into the door of the club. Uh, hands in the air, um, 7.5 out of 10. Did you see the music video? I have not seen any music videos, unfortunately. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I have failed in that. But I, I had to be working with my headphones. So, 
Sorry, guys. Yeah. And NSFW, that's some of them perhaps. Um, so the music video, uh, it starts with like a little, you know, she walks into a restaurant and there's a lot of kind of, let's say, it girls mm -hmm. around a table, including Rachel Sennett, Julia Fox, um, Rachel Sennett from Bottoms. The, oh, yes, yes, one, yes. Isn't, yeah. Um, so in the video, basically, it is her and a bunch of it girls in the music video. Chloe Sevigny turns up for a little bit. Oh, yeah. And everyone's like, oh, the only kind of retro retro thing and the i'm so julia that's very popular at the moment that's julia fox the, uh, okay yeah the actor uh who uh came out as a lesbian recently so uh, is all is it all this because one thing i just find quite interesting is at one point she says 999 and for yes. someone who's so american i'm surprised yes. you went down that route i mean I, I like it but you know yes uh. well do you know what i uh, i can't remember her name but i recently discovered on instagram this woman who she her, her concept is like what all songs by mm, sound like and she did what all songs by dua lipa sound like <laughs> and there's a section where where she goes, and I sing this in a British accent to, to remind everyone that I'm English. <laughs> and I think Charlie is a bit like that because her accent is a bit transatlantic. And sometimes she sounds very American, sometimes she sounds mm. very English. But 999, I was like, that's that's got to be deliberate. <laughs> got to be deliberate. Yeah, so yeah. So what do you are you, are you gonna score these to sell for just um I, I, I think for me it's too ethereal. I but yeah, three but 360, that was an immediate like. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you my relationship. Immediate like, I uh, I enjoyed it. I have um, liked four songs on my uh, my uh, Spotify. Oh, um, so next we have Club Classics. I put Melting Dubstep. Does that mean anything mm. to you? Uh, with a house mashup, but it doesn't go anywhere too. It's, so it, my one. So when I, I heard, like I mentioned earlier, when I said this is like a club uh, dance record. Yeah, there's no track on here which I would properly go mad for on the dance floor, really. And maybe there is one, that may, I and maybe she could up the BPM maybe on a couple of these before the BPM is a bit too safe sometimes. So this to me is six out of ten. So did you know about the Boiler Room RSVP? I, thing? People were saying that there's better versions of your songs with the Boiler Room. I think is it Mean Girls maybe? I haven't watched like oh, okay. I, I remember watching snippets of it on Instagram that people were sharing. Um, but yeah, like I. I, I think I wonder if listening to it and that and seeing all the people going mm. crazy would change your mind. Maybe. maybe. Also, you mentioned how she's she's um, so close to her fans. See what stamp some of the fans the piano for Mean Girls how did before she... the album <laughs> even came out as like a bonus thing. <laughs> so it's actually that messes, sounds about Charlie. I have an right? actual WhatsApp from your favorite pop star. It's pretty cool. Just, yeah, yeah, although I, a bit work, a bit well, yeah. as well. Safety. Like, <laughs> yeah, safety <Instant> obsession. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so moving on to. Tracks. Oh, hang on, but what's the oh, score? What's the score? Oh, sorry, six six out of ten for. Okay, Club that's Classic. better than I it's thought. It's good, it's good, yeah. And then um, Sympathy of a Knife, mm -hmm. and I have gone. Oh, this is this is a change, slightly change, and I've given yeah. it a seven out of ten. And I'm loving the vocals on this track and the, the production. I can't remember who produced this. I should have, I should have noted down who produced it. Let's go on but, credits. But, but there's one guy who, who's written a couple of songs. I noticed he was there. Sven Keen is the producer. One guy was, was there on the early Girls Aloud uh, singles in the middle of the season. Mm. Like this. And, a, and a band I've completely forgot about called Frank. Remember a girl band called Frank? Like oh circa 2005? Yes. Yeah, the guy, so yes. yeah, the guy who wrote some songs wrote, wrote for Frank. Because when you he, when he click on credits on Spotify, it does it in like how many plays order. So if you go all <laughs> the way down to the bottom, you see when he's all the flops back in like 2005. Oh, that's so interesting. And got, yeah, so what are your thoughts on Simply of a Knife? Uh, well, do you know who it, this is rumoured to be about? Oh, no, hit me with the got it. Taylor Swift. Oh, someone's right about her for once. Okay, kind okay, of like it. Yeah, because, well, to the point where Charlie, like some fans started like shouting Taylor Swift hate things during Charlie XX concerts and she's like that is not what this is about because um yeah I don't know if you remember but um Charlie supported Taylor Swift um on mm. tour and I think Charlie being Charlie I think she said she probably said something like you know I appreciated the um, experience but actually I just really want to do it by myself and then I think there are the rumors of like that wasn't received very well by Taylor Swift and it's like Taylor Swift did taste did date Matty Healy, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. So it's like being background, being backstage at my boyfriend's show. Well, she would have been perhaps backstage as well. I don't know the exact timelines. Um, but yeah, just like Girls So Confusing was rumored to be about Lord, that's 
what this is rumored about but i haven't i haven't dug in too deeply uh, and i don't really care <laughs> like for me i'm just like yeah i i, I like the phrase I, I really like the lyrics i like sympathy is a knife mm. why i want to buy a gun why i want to shoot myself volatile at, w at war with my dialogue i'd say that if there was a god if they could stop this world voice tearing me apart i'm so apprehensive now don't want to see her backstage at my boyfriend's show fingers crossed behind my back i hope they break up quick so mm. there we go yeah i don't know it's just it if it feels a bit different, you know, for lyrically for Charlie XCX, I have to say, just as girls so confusing, which we'll come to, of like, you know, she's really talking about her insecurities and her vulnerabilities. And yeah, again, I'll talk about this for when we come to girls so confusing. Nice. Um, so yeah, I may is it something was it, is it, I may something stupid. I might say something I stupid. I might say something stupid, yeah. I'm not I'm not a big fan of her vocoder, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. So like for me this was like a bit of a throwback. This could have been like um, you know, a justice down tempo or yeah. daft punk, like definitely French French touch. Well, I guess you you need the come down tracks, you need the chill out tracks yeah. in it. So I know it makes sense. But it doesn't it doesn't really go in or it doesn't really deliver for me. So I gave it a five out of ten. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I I this one I, I clicked with straight away. Actually, yeah, so just to go back quickly, mm. um, sympathy is a knife I like straight away. Club classics, I actually didn't like straight away because mm. I think on a first listen, it felt uh, yeah a bit repetitive and a bit more empty. But on on re listening, I like it more now. But I think yeah, it's one of those songs that I liked more kind of within the album, like as you're listening to the album rather than the song by itself. Mm -hmm. um, but going back to I might say something stupid. Um, the lyrics hit me really hard. Um, Especially the, I don't feel like nothing special. I snag my tights out on the lawn chair. Guess I'm a mess and play the role. Used to live for the party, door is open. I'm famous, but not quite. But I'm perfect for the background. One foot in a normal life. <laughs> Ooh, like, yeah, that's felt. And again, here I am talking about lyrics. I don't normally talk about lyrics with, uh, think think too much about lyrics with Charlie. With um, having a quite a, a minimal production sometimes does that mean that lyrics are easier to notice more because it's more about her vocal um i guess so and i guess and you know i listened to this obviously as soon as it came mm. out um but then when you start reading the review like that's it i think the first few times i listened to sympathy is a knife i didn't really know what it was about and then you read oh it's about Taylor Swift. oh okay let's go and listen to this <laughs> a bit more closely i think that's what happened there. <laughs> i met some Taylor Swift for later one um so okay. moving on to talk talk mm -hmm. uh Great band. Um, so yeah, so this is the glossy pop. I imagine it would be more. It's it's as sort of, it's as catchy as it's catchy because it's repetitive of all the the talk 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 uses all the time. Um, it, it but again, it falls down the sofa for me. Um, I give it a six out of ten. Um, but I've heard it too many times. This, this kind of track. Yeah. Is it? It seems like an obvious pop song, maybe but too obvious. Yeah. This this for me is the weakest song. Okay. I'm brat. Um. Like even there are songs on here that you know I'm looking at the track listing now and they definitely you know the songs that I gravitate towards, but there's songs that like Apple or Mean Girls that I didn't like so much on a first listing that actually on a on a mm -hmm. second listing I did. But talk talk, I mean I don't hate it, but it's fine. I think it's like yeah. you said, it's 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 a pop song that you expect, but I think that's it. Most of the other songs on this album are not necessarily what you would expect. And uh, so a Von Dutch was is that her? Big single from the year was that the biggest one? Or, yeah, you know? I, I I talked about it briefly. Like, like I got absolutely obsessed with the song. I talked about <laughs> it in um in one of the art episodes this season. I got to and that was the first, and I that's what made me so excited. To me, it sounds like naughty dance. Um, I gave it a seven out of ten. Ah, uh, for me, it's a for me, it's a hundred out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I got again. I can't remember which episode this season I talked about it, but I got absolutely upset. I'm still upset. Like, I just I have not got sick of it at all. Um. It's brilliant. And uh, the music video you should absolutely watch. It is her going crazier and crazier in um, uh, in Paris. Is she, has she performed any of this, any of this live yet at all? I think she's DJed mostly because she was in Ibiza and stuff like that. But mm. there is a brat tour coming with Shy Girl supporting that I am devastated to not be going to. So do you um, think it's still going to be just her with microphone and the backing track? I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, when I saw her live in 2019, okay. it was her with the microphone. So yeah, I think it's gonna be. She's playing O2 in London. Is like, is that enough? Can you just stand there? Oh, I, like yeah, like the Charlie fans are are dedicated. Like, um, you know, I always complain about Belgian crowds, and when I saw her, it was one of the livelier crowds for sure. And I mean, now, now, it, like with the kind of you know, it's like even Junior Anderson was posting. She posted the latest like 
photo carousel with a Charlie XCX. Like everyone, everyone knows the songs. Like what, what will probably happen is, yeah, the songs from Brat will probably be the most sung and actually maybe the older ones. Not, but I, yeah, let's see. Unless everyone, you know, manages to get into <laughs> Charlie's catalog by October. Cool. Cool. So yeah, everything is rom- romantic. That's why I noticed the, the rap attack. Um, not the greatest chorus. Um, I, I prefer the second half of the track. Um, but great production, and it's like a dirty laser gun sound in the background. So quite. Enjoyed. You said laser gun. Um, yeah, you like a laser gun. I do. I, do. I, do. I, XX, yeah. I like a sci-fi hyper hyper pop song. Yeah. I don't know if that's like anything. Uh, so I gave us a seven out of ten. And at, and at first, I thought, is this like a guest person rapping? Because I, 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 I thought I kept looking at the uh, the credits to, for anything, but it's her. So yeah, kudos. It's her. It's her with probably a bit less auto tune than normal. Mm. So yeah, this was a song that. It didn't really click with me the the first couple of times because it's it's quite a long, you know, it starts with these kind of swirling strings and all this stuff before getting into the mm-hmm. um, but on repeated listenings, that's it. The when you know the structure of the song and you know you've got that thumping bass to look forward to. Now now I like the whole song. Um so yeah, I think I think it's a mm-hmm. good one. Uh rewind, didn't like it when I first heard it, but now I like it. I, I now I've got into the the rewind effects, the electric electro class breaks. Um, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This is this is a bonus track, fantastic. I could, I could, I could speed this up. I gave it a seven and a half out of ten. Yeah. So rewind. I for me, this is like the nineteen ninety nine of this album. Mm. I feel like it, it, it sounds very similar to nineteen ninety nine for me. Uh, and again, similar themes of like rewind, blah 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 blah. The past. Um, yeah. No. I again. I think. I think this is quite catchy. Um, although, yeah, maybe everything is romantic is a bit more addictive, whereas this is like easier listening. Do you reckon she, if this would be an album and she does like about six or seven videos for it? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, let's like, see. like Michael Jackson for bad sort of thing, like keep pumping him out. Um, then yeah, then so I um, change the pace, and this is when I thought this sounds like a 1975 slash Taylor Swift ballad because a oh, lot of wow. them use this kind of production and that kind of like that sort of scattery um like bp 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 that's my 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 proper words well BP, but you BP, know BP, her BP fiance sound. is the drummer from 1975 right but he's, he's not the producer though on this one i'm checking he, he, he's produced some of them i think yeah i think yeah. it was a seven and a half out of ten but yeah but it, this did feel again like a modern uh synth ballad with a lot of like so yeah, Swifty and 1975 and even Georgia have that sort of sound at the moment. Do you know what it's about? Hit me. Oh, you don't, you don't know? I, okay, I so, know it's a, it, so it's about Sophie, the producer. That's oh, what it's called, oh, So I. Oh, the one that you passed away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, okay. go, go and take a look at the lyrics because it's it's it really, that's it. It's actually probably kind of one of my least favourite songs on the record. Does it sound like her production? But, is, um, it, is it, is it cool? Not no? really. Okay, okay. <laughs> Not really, but that's why she's talking about like, like everything she's talking about is her relationship with Sophie. Right. So you know, you used to kind of you asked me out for dinner, I would say no. How, would you like the songs that I'm making now? Uh, that's so I obviously Sophie without the. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, go go and listen to it again with the lyrics because it's very very moving. I apologize to anyone listening, but I didn't. Know. <laughs> you didn't know. You didn't know. You're judging it. You're judging it based on the song. Like that's again. That was one where the first time I I knew there was going to be a song about Sophie on the record. So the literally the first time I heard the song, I was like, uh, I know what this is going to be about. But yeah, I guess because I don't listen to much 1975 or Taylor Swift, I can't really make a comparison. Over underrated. So moving on to Girl So Confusing, which you say is about Lordia, yeah? Yeah, have you heard the remix with Lordia? I have not, I have not. So I put oh my s- God, Fran, like, again, <laughs> you have to. You have I to. discovered the app like five hours ago. I need to, need no, to but ready. honestly, honestly, right, I'm even going to say, like, um, I will find, like, I, I think it's impossible to talk about this song without talking about Lord's verse on the song. Yeah, speaking about this, it's it's got a similar vibe to Talk Talk, but it does effing better. So it has a more infectious verse. I love the flow into the chorus. I think the chorus is delicious. It's got some, I hate saying the word, but sick Hoover synth bass. Um, it's got this like sp- extra sparkle on the track, which is missing from some of the other songs on it. And I give this an 8 out of 10. It's the highest, no, joint highest on the album. So, joint yeah. highest. Right. You're going to go away, right? Go and find... Charlie XCX, the girl so confusing version with Lord, and mm. listen from one minute thirty, and listen listen to the lyrics. 
I've got no idea who, who's friends. I didn't know that Lord was friends with Charlie. So well, no, she, that's the whole point. Ah. That's the whole point. Oh. Blimey. That was fun to watch you watch it, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wow. Wow. People are replying versus on songs. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I mean that, that was one of the one of the memes. It's like, let's work out on the remix. Uh <laughs> it's it's really it's gorgeous because um to what so you know they now they sing together, then I think Lord sings a bit more mm. and she says, uh, I would still ride for you, Charlie. And then right at the end, Charlie goes, I would ride for you too. Honestly, it's like uh... it is a peon to to female friendship and I think, yeah, Charlie said, like, oh, you know, people think this is a diss track, but it's not a diss track. It's about just, like, yeah, the conflicting feelings you have and, like, the way that you compare yourself to other people. So, yeah, and I I, I think the song is one of the best, even without the remix, but the remix takes it up to another level, I think. And I'm sure maybe next year at Coachella, Lord will suddenly oh, walk my, out. My, <laughs> I, <laughs> the, the I would faint. <laughs> I <laughs> see your phones going insane into live and that happens. Well, but what's amazing is that, um, oh yeah, because I, I think that's on Charlie's verse. Uh, she says, you know, we'll we'll put this out on the remix. The internet will go crazy, and the internet went crazy. Like it really. My internet says through. no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> computer said no. <laughs> yeah, a guy in his forties does not have that in the timeline, but I, I, I'm I'm happy. I, I, you know, it's nice. I've got a fair bit of listening because I'm, I'm yeah. a fan of Lord. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm not like, um, let's say, yeah, like a back catalogue fan of Lord, but mm -hmm. I, I really like some of her songs. Cool. So moving on to apples, I put down Larue. Oh. <laughs> Larue. Remember Larue? I do Larue. remember Larue. Joyful Skippy verse. You're right, um, Larue. Pull my car top down and drive to the airport. Um. Wicked bass line, similar to Bunksy Bunk Beat, um, but that's not a bad thing. Eight out of ten, a banger. Oh, really? So this is one of your favourites? Yeah, this is my joint favourite with uh, Girls Are Confusing. So it's quite interesting to have two top, two tracks that far into the um, the, into the album. That's interesting, because yeah, Apple was one that took a bit longer for me. Mm. Um, I think because of just the airport, the airport, I was like, what's going on? Why is she going to the airport? <laughs> like, it just, I got a bit stuck on that. But um, this is the one that's had the viral dance. Have you have you seen this? Or right. not? Yeah, I love, I love this. I love, I love this is honestly it's like, I'm, it's like I'm talking so to an uncle and I'm, I'm so, <laughs> no, but I did the same to my dad like uh, I, I had a drive with my dad and I was like dad can I monologue at you about Charlie X I mean like you know who she is and know some of her music uh, which is more than than him. So uh, this TikToker whose name I can't remember, she created this dance uh, which you might have seen the dance it's basically the dance where like people go like this with the apple and drive anyway Stephen Colbert has done it that's the latest person that I've seen How, how long ago did this happen? Uh, in the last two or three weeks. Oh, okay, so that means that when the football begins, someone's going to score a goal and do that dance. Uh, you know, so that, that will happen. That will happen. Yeah, but that's that's probably why you've missed a lot of this. And that's how I learned like that, the dabbing and all the other things. It's just from fucking, yeah, from football. So someone scores a goal. Oh. Like, what, the what the fuck is that? Sure, I think I learned about it when, like, was it like some Spanish prince, some little tiny child? Did it on like a balcony? Or was it like maybe oh, really? the British royal family? And they were like, even he's doing it. I'm like, doing what? What are you talking? Like about? the flossing and that sort of stuff. Oh, you know? flossing, yeah, yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that might happen in the next two weeks when football starts again. I'll, I'll see the apple dance and I'll let you know. Apple dance. Like this. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah. Who have, who have I seen do it? I've seen Glenn Powell and Daisy Edgar Jones do it because they're in a film. Yes. Stephen Colbert. Christmas, yep. Um, yeah, because I mean, it's so I think Charlie has credited the person who did it, but Charlie did it in a video with Troy Savan. And yeah, I feel like I see it once a day from from someone that I follow. Um, but yeah, she said that like it, this was the track that was almost left off the album. So if you think it's oh. one of the best, um... but that happens a lot of my favorite songs, just yeah, especially singles. Yeah, oh, thank you very much. Um, so moving on to B2B, mm -hmm. um, so not this... business to business. <laughs> this to me isn't like this is the worst song on the album for me. A bit throw away. It's a bit throw away. It meands and I put yeah, this this needs to have a higher um B BNP to come interesting, but for me it doesn't really go anywhere. Not not BNP. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be BNP, definitely. <laughs> Beats per minute in the car, it's not the uh it's not the, the British, British National Party. <laughs> Von Dutch was released before the album came out, as was 360, Club Classics, and B2B. But shit, that's a, it's a single. Wow, I'm, okay. Well, it's kind of like a double A-side with, with Club Classics. And I, I didn't gel with it at all. Mm. 
like at all before it being on the album. But on the album, I quite like it. So actually, it was almost the opposite of um, Club Classics, where it's like uh, I listened to it by itself and I was like, Meh. and then I listened to it on the album and I'm like, because I'm in this club world now, like you say, like the world of a nightclub, mm. on repeated listings, I think it's the, you know, when it breaks down, it's just like back, 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 that synth line in the background I'm I'm a big fan of because yeah her voice is quite whiny yeah it doesn't surprise me that, that you don't like it. I think but I would say it might be a bit of a grower okay so off to Mean Girls off to Mean Girls what did you think yeah so this is the one about is it Dasha Nikosova uh and yeah never heard of her um uh, but yeah I guess they say this is about her um being in her 20s smart with that uh, such a looking dead-eyed woman. But yeah, I, I, I feel the way the lyrics listen to the music and it's got this unexpected piano line comes in about a minute and a half, which really r- rises up. Um, I can imagine a younger generation pushing on their sassy eye and on their way out listening to this song, being, being a mean girl and going, why not? Um, I give it a seven and a half out of ten. Yeah, I um I really like this song. I really like the way it builds. Mm. So by the time the, the yeah unexpected piano, I was like mm-hmm. piano like this, like it's almost like nineties throwback. Uh, with that kind of electronic yeah. music. But yeah, the do 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 like getting louder and louder. I I enjoy it. And yeah, I I think you know there's we haven't talked about this yet, but there's a lot of debate of like oh Charlie X X and Brat. It's a very Gen Z phenomenon because obviously mm. it's like on TikTok. But people are saying no, it's actually very millennial because. Charlie XCX, it's, it's all very anti-wellness, right? It's like drugs. And I don't know if you saw the the snippet. I think it's her talking to Nick Grimshaw, um, where I think he asked her, like, what to you is is brat? And she said, a pack of cigs, a bit lighter, a strappy white top with no bra. <laughs> 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 and did you see the video I sent you of the comedian? I think King Juliet Lewis, but is that to you? Is that to you in 90s? That is her look, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we go. And you need to have a cigarette poking out of your mouth. And uh, uh, okay. well, that's it. It's about like you know dancing, but feeling a bit awkward, which I think we can we can both relate to for mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> so, like I like this immediately, but I I think this is becoming one of my favorites on the album on repeated listening. Yeah, I mean, this for me would be a single definitely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then uh, step backwards for I think about it all the time. It reminds me of Lily Allen. Don't even if you got that vibe. Oh wow, not at all. But yeah, maybe because of the talking segments again, the bit of the like, the more Essex, a London accents kind of thing, and it's got like a postal service production to it as well. I gave it a five and a half out of ten for that one. Did you read the lyrics? See what it was about? Uh, of course not. Uh, so it's basically about her wondering whether she wants to have kids. Oh yes, I did. I did, did notice that. Yeah, I think because so much of this album is up tempo. This song, like I might say something stupid, it's like when I listen to the album. Sometimes I want the the down tempo and the calm, and sometimes I'm like, come on, guys, get to the point. Uh, even though, yeah, I, I I can relate to to her feelings, and it, it's very specific. Again, it's very specific. It's about her friend Nuni Bao who also I think was one of the co-writers on Apple, who she's also also collaborated with before. And mm-hmm. it's literally, she's like, I went to Stockholm to visit my friend and there she was with the baby. And uh, so it's again, very, it is about her life. Um, so I think, yeah, I enjoy more the thematics than the song. Uh, but again, like, it's not a bad song. Like, I, I really don't think there's a bad song on this album. 15 to, that's a bit, it's a bit baggy, maybe. I would, I could shed three or four, Mm-hmm. If I shed if I shed three or four, I could, this would be a four star album for me. But are you bumping that on the last track, Fran? Uh, I would three six five. Let's go and get fucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a sellout. <laughs> uh, I gave it a seven a seven out of ten, so that would be on it. I I, I like the bookends. Um, but yeah, I would I would kick out. Uh, I may say something stupid. Uh, talk talk. Uh, yeah, B to B. And I think about it all the time. I kick those out. And then, yeah, it'd be a, a four, an eight out of ten album, maybe for me. Yeah, I think for me, it's too early. It's too mm-hmm. early to tell. I'm still uh, with, see, with deep the in the brat trenches. Song, with the new three songs, will yes. any of those get on this album? So that's interesting because I, I would have said a week ago, no. Mm. Um, But now I kind of like all of them. Mm-hmm. Would they get, like, I am perfectly happy to not have them on the album. But I have been enjoying it because, again, I obviously I listened to the album first, the the main one, 
so I, I don't know them as well as the others, but um, I think Guess probably my favorite when she's talking about Guess the color of my underwear. <laughs> I don't quite think what's going on down there. I quite enjoy, it, but um, yeah, it's weird because, like I said, happy to, to not have them, but happy to have them as well to listen to. I think as discussed on the last episode with Charlie, a lot of this stuff you need to watch it live. You need to watch it live to get into it. A lot of songs that I didn't like on previous albums, I would then went to watch alive and then started adoring them. So does the production change at all? Um, um, not really. Uh, although, well, I guess what what happened, you know, 360 and 365, obviously, they're remixes of each other, right? But what's interesting is that they are quite different songs, mm. as with Girls So Confusing as well. Like, the, it feels almost like two different songs to me because only the beginning is similar and then you have the Lord verses. So it'd be interesting to see... For those songs, what what version she puts on? Uh, but no, it, it is you know it is just her on a microphone with backing tracks. She might ad lib a bit more, but usually, you know, I've only seen her once five years ago. Uh, from memory, no, it's just it's just her. But she just has such a presence. Mm. She has such a presence, and like I said, the audience is so with it that it's it's a really fun experience. Be interesting to see what happens in the uh, the British festival lineups for next year because I've not we have seen her ever do a festival. Well, this was a big debate that happened this mm. year at Glastonbury because she did, I think, a DJ set at Glastonbury and everyone's like, why is Camilla Cabello and Dua Lipa and all these people, blah, blah, blah. But as as they said, like, you know, I don't think even Emily Evis could have predicted the, the yeah, success yeah, yeah. that Brett would have. Because they, they booked this back in, like, November, December, so they went on that. Yeah. yeah, but I read this whole article of, of like, Glastonbury's problem with pop. Um, of, like, you know, yeah, not especially because I mean like yeah Camille Cabello is is American right I think like they actually had quite a lot of American pop stars obviously do a deeper headlining but actually how much British pop Sugar Babes I can't even uh, remember who the, the Sunday headline was the one everyone complained about uh so it was Dua Lipa Coldplay oh Scissor yeah yeah and I I didn't know one song and that's maybe the yeah. first time in my life I've not known a headline of songs at all and people are complaining about them more than anything I think it's a are they massive in America or TikTok? Yeah, they are and massive in America. And that's why yeah. in UK we're like, oh. No, but I mean, Scissors, Scissors she's someone who's been very um, critically acclaimed. It's kind of like a little bit too ethereal for me, her music. Like it just doesn't, it floats and it doesn't quite land. Uh, but yeah, I was like, that is a weird choice yeah. for a British festival, not for an American yeah. festival. So yeah, so I think the National had, had a bigger audience on the, on the other stage. But I mean, Sugar it. Babes, famously, like, that's it. at least Sugar Babes came back and played West Holtz. But Sugar Babes, mm. like, they had to shut the tent. I think, I do agree that Glastonbury maybe has an issue with pop. Uh, and I, I would be surprised if Charlie didn't have a, a a good slot next year. Did you see about what Nadine Shah said about Glastonbury? Which I thought no. was interesting. So Nadine Shah was offered Glastonbury, but she wasn't offered a televised um, oh, really? slot. And so she tweeted and she was like, I'm not going because I just can't afford to play Glastonbury if it's not with a tele televised slot that's going to promote me. I thought that, that the whole thing is almost televised, isn't it? No, no, I really? think there's that's at certain stages are oh, certain wow. slots. So I was like, what a shame, and a British artist as well. Because I haven't even completed the Glastonbury because the same months on there. Oh, uh, like I think I think I watched like six or seven, uh, yeah. and then like a few songs here and there um, from other people. Yeah, well, yeah. What did you see? What were your Glastonbury highlights while we're here? I, 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 so I've only done the, the obvious ones, the ones I knew really. I've not gone down the, I should probably check out these new artists kind of thing yet. Mm. So I've seen like Dua Lipa, I've seen Coldplay, I've seen James, I've seen The National, uh, I watched Block Party, um, you know, I did I did the, the usual ones. Oh yeah, because you've been in your um, not watching modern music. So who was the best thing I should watch and you saw? So I, I can tell you who I saw in full, from memory. Um, I saw Little Sims, who was incredible. I saw Danny Brown, who I, that was one men, well mentioned on the Charlie, Charlie XX previous mm. episode. That was interesting because I didn't know all the songs, and he has quite a high pitched voice, Danny Brown. But I I quite enjoyed it, and I saw when he guested on with Idols on one of their songs as well mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. the Idol set. I saw PJ Harvey. That was a bit weird. She was a bit robotic, like, and the audience was also a bit robotic. Oh really? It was what a stage? Bit... Was she on a big stage? Mid stage? She was on. A, she was on a big stage. No, but not. I don't think the pyramid stage. Um, okay. Possibly. I saw. I saw yeah. Cindy Lauper. Ah, oh, how was that? Well, people said she's off key, but she was fine. And I saw one way basketball club and and Otty, um Damon Arban came on and sang two songs, which was nice. Oh, which was good. I saw Orbital as well because I'd never seen them before. I really enjoyed them. Really, classic, really enjoyed it. Classic Glastonbury, aren't they? Orbital. 
The National I watched, but his voice was also was quite bad. Shout out to Helen, uh, our previous guest, who mm. sent me videos of her watching them from Glastonbury. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad she had a lovely time. Uh, bringing it back, you know, so you've been in your in your kind of music bubble, insulated, you know, watching the football, insulated from the modern world. Has Charlie XX's brat inspired you to engage? No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch the videos. I'm going to listen to the remixes. Um... Mm. Yeah, I, I've gotten into um. Oh, so my mind has gone. Who is that other artist I mentioned? Who is it? I said she's quite a flamboyant American. Oh, Chapel Room. Yeah, yeah. I watched um a live set um tiny tiny desks, and I liked two songs a lot. Mm. <laughs> I wasn't blown away. There's two Vegas songs, and the rest is a. Uh, but um, but I like her look and style, so um, um, I will keep an eye on her. I think "Good Luck, Babe" is a modern classic. Mm, mm, it, yeah. I like. I get goosebumps listening to it, especially when it slows down towards the end. And there's one about pink, pink something that like, we like that song as well. Come on, called. Oh, uh, so that's another one where I think there's a Kamala Harris video with "Phenomenon" or whatever it's called by Chapel Roan. I that's been co-opted really? as well. And then I saw a tweet because <laughs> have Have you heard about the Katy Perry backlash? Yeah, uh, I have seen the video to that. I I. <laughs> don't want to see the video i feel like i've seen reviews of people talking about what the video is about uh i saw a tweet which was like it's this is very bitchy but it's like casey perry offered woman's world to kamala harris for the the campaign the team very kindly declined (laughs) (laughs) it's funny how people start hating us almost after a while uh, oh, I, I'll tell you who I did see on the one show last week. Oh, Nelly, oh. Nelly Furtado. <laughs> Nelly Furtado, who's, who has been diagnosed with ADHD. Another one for the it? books. She yeah. yeah, she's like, yeah, I've, I've not heard a, a single a single peep of anything new, but... Nice, what, she's, nice she's making a new album. Her. Yeah, well, I assume she was to be on the one show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I will listen with interest, of course. But yeah, I thank you, Fran, for in, in, indulging me, because as I said, it's the thing about this album is I want to talk about the marketing, the concept, the reactions of other people, mm-hmm. almost as much as I want to talk about the music. I think some some might say that that detracts, but the music is excellent as well. So, um, yes, I hope that you enjoyed. She's very much the modern artist. Yeah. Big on social media. Big on, great live, great songs, great collaborations. Perfect. The classics, Fran. Club, club classics. Club classics. Until next time, guys. See you in the club. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bumping. Thank you for reaching the end. We hope you enjoyed this special episode. We do them every now and again. If you like this sort of thing, some special episodes, or you have some ideas for themes or musicians that we should talk about, you can get in touch with us. It's at OU Music Pod on Twitter, at Over Underrated Music Pod on Instagram and threads when I remember to post on there. Or you can also email us over underrated music pod at gmail.com. Don't forget to listen to Billie Eilish and Charlie XCX episode as an accompaniment to this one or as part one. And we hope you're not being too Julia and continue listening and subscribing and liking. See you.